Very good evening. Welcome to all. Today is an auspicious day when we are celebrating Ma Mary, Mother Mary Curie's birth anniversary, who is a renowned Nobel laureate. And today we are celebrating his birth anniversary here. And uh, being an organizer of in the International Saravai Student Scientist Award 2023, myself, Anjun Boni, National Chairman of Whole Organizing Committee and National Council of Researcher Teacher Scientists India, which is a affiliated science organization of Vigyan Prasar Network of Science Clubs, WIPNET. Vigyan Prasar under the autonomous organization under Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, as well as along with us here, National Council of Student Scientists India is also available uh, part of this occasion and the most prominently the event organizer, Rasa India National Voluntary Organization science communication communicators from Tripura at the national level and registered society of government of Tripura. Welcome to all, I myself, Anjan Muni, welcoming all of you. Today we are going to celebrate one webinar with NASA scientists. First ever day of so kind we'll meet engineer Gabe Lord Grave Gabriel who is an renowned engineer from NASA Kennedy Space Center but before going to all of this and to before promoting the fourth 4.4 India International Sarawai Student Scientist Award 2023, which will be started from 1st January 2023, which is a birth anniversary of scientist SN Ghost, as well as our most respected teacher, Super 30 Biopic 
famous personality Anand Kumar also. So we will start on that day, that is 1st January, the India International Saravai Student Scientist Award 2023 with e-quiz which will be conducted with Google Form and uh, all of you are invited to be participate there and minimum scoring should be 40 percent and we will select either jury's decision wise or 80 percent scorers so first of all we are beginning with a small uh, inaugural session and then we'll go with the stone uh, game lecture Upcoming 2023, uh, here you have to go through who can participate, what will be the awarded, what to do. First, in first round, they have to appear in Google form, which is a password protected and very nominal fees are there. Please go through the details in uh, Google form and uh, you have to attend only on Sundays. Uh, you choose the Sunday and uh, submit the fee if it is applicable in some conditions CWSN, BPL or post Tripura participant it is not required no fee are required for those persons uh, but you have to appear on the any Sunday you have you can choose in between 1st January to 28th February in this uh, section almost uh, 6 uh, Sundays and uh, our inspirations Engineer George A. Salazar from NASA, Dr. Bharat Chaniara from ISRO, Jayant Joshi from ISRO Sub Mission Mangal, Professor Dr. T. P. Sharma from NCRT, Anand Kumar, uh, Super 30 teacher, famous personality due to his biopic Super 30, Professor Prabhakar Sharma, senior scientist from PRL. <laughs> Namo Brahmadev, Namaste Bayo, 
so many participants are there in facebook we are can see some come on wishes also uh, we, so thanks to all of them who are watching us in live at uh, our facebook page as well as in delay live in our youtube link uh, youtube.com oblique anjan writer and facebook pages also we are also invited all of uh, our participants to uh, subscribe our youtube channel especially as well as to be member of our uh, facebook page as well as facebook group of sarabhai student scientist award so uh, within a few minutes we will uh, expecting gave and our system so we will request all of you also please join in our google meet system also thank you Yes sir yes sir Please please Yeah yeah yeah
yes uh, our guest is ready very good evening once again uh, to all uh, myself anjun boni uh, from tripura india being the national chairman of uh, the organizing part of fourth upcoming fourth we can say 4.0 india international saravai student scientist award 2023 which will be organized with an google form international e quiz on astro olympiad from 1st january 2023 and we'll uh, expecting 1 lakh above students should participate there and uh, what the specially science loving and want to be scientist in near future under the blessed guidance of our Gabe Gabe is also with us most respected scientist in India uh, from NASA it's our pride moment also but uh, please prepare yourself for this uh, event that is India International Saravai Student Scientist Award 2023 with a Google e quiz uh, olympiad from 1st January 2023 the details has been given already in the our site sites.google.com view sarabhai ssa also and in our youtube channel and facebook also where it is this program is already in live so once again i am welcoming you all today is a one, another very uh, auspicious occasion because we are also celebrating uh, worldwide the birth anniversary of uh, nobel laureate great scientist women scientist uh, may madam mary query also so in this blessed occasion it's our right moment when gabe is also with us gabe is nanning uh, our uh, first of all gabe is our well wisher and one uh, most respected scientist engineer from nasa who are in our events here former director of engineering for us air force Opera special operations commandant command former contractor engineer for nasa at kennedy space center which is a prestigious space station uh, on the earth to explore the whole universe also under nasa guidance member of nasa speaker bureau for 11 years and international speaker international speaker presenter who presented in 16 more than 16 countries including our india also and today he is with us to bless us to motivate us to be scientist for future and also he is a site site guide for a try for a try uh, athlete who is blind also so please be be keep your patience and listen what gabe say about the nasa achievements about the the future science process of nasa and for the benefit of all mankind so please welcome sir gabe sir you are most welcome here in this platform please uh, inaugurate this session with your words of wisdom sir okay okay i will ready to start yeah 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 sir yeah sir yes okay so i would like to say to everyone in india good evening to you i'm in brazil Morning time here. So in Brazil, we say bom dia and hello. 
Oh, it's too tight. You want to come here? See what you can do. you can have this opportunity. I just got India. I was in India just weeks ago. And I had the most amazing time. You know, I've experienced with many, many presentations. Thousands and thousands of people. And the I spent some time in India. And I'm really thankful for the opportunity. And looking forward to coming back. So right now in Brazil, I'm doing the same thing I did in, in India, which is going to schools and students. We have the opportunity today to take advantage of it. We will talk about the space program in America, talk about the history, which includes the space shuttle, what is going to Mars, about the present space program, which also has astronauts in the space station, about the future of the space program, which involves astronauts going to the moon and going to Mars. I'm going to walk right now. You'll we'll have the opportunity to walk on the moon or walk on Mars. It's going to happen. It's going to happen probably within the next 15 years or so. If you're interested in this stuff, you'll have many opportunities. Right now, these people from all over the world, in what countries are getting involved? First, this road, the water flow of the This road will be sending out to the Really believe that. You are in India, you will find it has to be part of the program. Always be that. It's we post a talk about the presentation. Now, in India and around the world, always in order to be successful, you must work hard. In order to do well in school, you must work hard. In order to do well in your job, you must work hard. In order to do well in sports, you must work hard. You are told over and over to be successful, you must work hard. And if you're not successful, it's your fault. You're not working hard enough. Work harder. You hear this over and over. But I want to say to all of you, you never have to work. Nothing ever has to be hard. You can have fun with your life and be very successful. If you just think about three things, and we will talk about these three things as we progress with the presentation. Do your best. Enjoy what you do. Believe in yourself. If you can learn these three things, you will never work. Nothing will ever be hard. You will have no stress. You will have no pressure. Your life can be very successful. And you can have fun doing it. That's what I want you to know. That's what I, I could tell you a little bit about me because I want you to know I'm no different than you. I'm just like most of you. And most of you are probably doing more than better than I did when I was your age. But one of the things I talk about, of course, for me, I hated school. I did really terrible in school. I loved the beach and I love sports. So when I was a little kid, they dragged me off the beach and they put me in a box and they said, read. And it was really hard for me to do that. I didn't like it at all. So I flunked everything. It was really a challenge. To make it worse, I have a twin sister. My twin sister loves school. So when you have a twin or a brother or sister close in age, you're always compared. My twin sister, she was always the smart twin. I was the not so smart twin. My sister, she was always the twin who never got in trouble. I was the twin who always got in trouble. She never caused problems. I always caused problems. And I drove my parents crazy. They would say to me, why can't you be like your sister? Your sister never causes problems. All you do is cause problems. And when they would say that to me, somehow my sister, I don't know how, but somehow she knew when she was three years old, she wanted to be a teacher. Somehow she knew that. So she loved school because she knew it was taking her to be a teacher. And when they would say to me, why can't you be like your sister? I would think she loved school. I hate school. Why do I want to be like her? It was really a challenge. In America, like in India, we have to go to high school. Now, high school is four years long. I believe yours is the same. But our high school is four years long. I did not want to go, but I had to go. But we have great sports programs in high school. So I said, okay, I'm going to go to high school, but I'm just going to go to high school to play sports. I'm not going to do anything else. So for four years, that was all I did. I just did a little bit of learning so I could play sports. At the end of four years, I said, I'm done. I'm never going back to school again. I'm finished. I'm done with it forever. So my first job after high school was working at McDonald's. 
And I know you have McDonald's in India. I went there when I was living in India. So I want you to know my first job was in America. We say flipping burgers and making fries. So that's what I was doing. And it was awesome. We had no homework, no tests, just hanging out with my friends. I thought, this is excellent. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a burger flipper. But I like to race cars. And no matter how many burgers I flipped or fries I made, I could not generate the income. So for those of you who see the presentation now, you see there it says my name is Gabe. Excuse me, I just did something I didn't want to do. Okay, so my name is Gabe, this is my nickname. This is what my friends call me. This is what I want you to call me. We have a chance to talk to us, say, hey Gabe, I know in India you want to call me sir. Everybody wants to call me sir, and I understand why you do that, and I respect it. But I ask everybody, just all my friends to call me Gabe, and that's what I ask you. If you can't do that, it's okay, but I will try to remind you all the time, please call me Gabe. So I've been to 16 countries around the world speaking at schools. It's really been amazing. I was in India two times. I was there three years ago, and I was just there two weeks ago, and it was an amazing opportunity for me. I've been dreaming of going to India for a long time. So when I finally got to go there, it was much, much better than I even imagined. But one of the things I get asked by kids around the world, Gabe, what's it like to be at a space center? If you're at a space center, I'm at Kennedy Space Center, which is in Cocoa Beach, Florida. And they say, what is it like to be at a space center? What do you do every day when you go to work? Is it fun? And I always say to them, it's magic. It's the most amazing thing you can imagine. If you think about it, if you're driving into work and you see buildings, Inside these buildings, you see ships being built, everything put together that you know is going to go to space. And then you see it taken to a launch pad, loaded on a rocket. You see all of these things every day. Then you actually see it go to space. And then you follow the mission along. It's just so much fun to do that. Every room you go in, every building, every hallway, there's always pictures of space or of science or of something of astrology. It just makes your mind go in these magical places. And once your mind is there, then you can physically look at something happen. So it's so much fun. And I want you to have fun today or this evening. When, whenever I do this, I have fun doing it. I want you to have fun listening to it. I want you to understand you can have fun and learn at the same time. And we'll talk about that more as we progress through this. So the first thing I talk about is Johnson Space Center. Now, Kennedy Space Center is in Cocoa Beach, Florida. We have many space centers around America and around the world. The most famous one is Johnson Space Center. This is in Houston, Texas. This is where the astronauts live and train. And when they live and train, they stay, stay in Johnson. They come to Kennedy. They go on a ship. They stop in space six months or more. They come back down. They go back to Johnson. And this is what happens. So I want to have a, a little movie to show you what it's like to be at Johnson Space Center.
That's a lesson, PCB, we cannot feel the floor. Cause the lack of gravity, the destination's on. The master boy must hold the movie on. Blasting the bomb, stop the countdown soon. The roof is inside. Countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Now we say blast off and we all pass. That's a Johnson star. That's a Johnson star. So you see how much fun it is to be at the Space Center. This is what we do every day. We just have fun. And this should be your life. I want you to think about those three things. Do your best. Enjoy what you do. Believe in yourself. If you can learn those three things, your life will be so easy and you have so much fun while you are successful. In America and in India, we have something called STEM. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. And if you have a good math science background, you can get a lot of really good jobs. A little movie to show you some of the things you can do if you're good in STEM. Ever think you could help invent artificial intelligence? Or design the tools used to perform research on Mars? How about finding a cure for cancer or helping to develop a green fuel? Before you say no, think again. Think STEM. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Studying STEM opens to a wide range of hands-on, cutting-edge careers and can create amazing opportunities. From designing rockets to building robots, we're running the computer programs that will change the way we work and live. You can help shape the future of our world. Are you ready for the challenge? Then let's get started. So well, that's the STEM and some of the things you can do if you're good at math and science. We also have something called STEAM. Science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And STEAM is very important to me because when you include arts, in math and science, you get a much better perspective. You get views on both sides. It's a very good friend of mine. Her name is Tina. When I was studying math and science, she was going to junior art school dance in New York City and study become a dancer. And she became a very good dancer. And she taught me about STEAM. <coughs> she said, Gabe, when I study arts, I have to learn these 10 things. To be creative, to build confidence, to solve problems. The same thing you do in math and science, I do in arts. So when you combine the two, you get a much better product. So one of my favorite pictures in the space program, you see all those billions of stars that are above us every single night. The reason you don't see them, the light from the Earth filters them out. But if it was completely black on Earth and you looked at the sky, this is what you would see every single night. Later on, I'm going to show you a movie where I wonder what it's like to be on Mars and look at the night sky at Mars. Because there's no light on Mars, you will see what the sky looks like. It would be the same here on Earth. If it was completely black. When we had shuttle launches, we had day launches, and we had night launches. The main reason we had a space shuttle, it was the only thing large enough and powerful enough to take the big pieces to space to build a space station. But the night launches were spectacular. What happens, just like you have a football match in India, you go to a football match at night, everything is all lit up. All the field is lit up, the bleachers, everything is lit up, and you're watching this football match. It's the same thing with us when we go see a launch at night. It's a big party. We get there two or three hours ahead of time. We bring drinks. We bring food. We have a big party watching the launch. And we're about five kilometers away from the launch pad. So at five kilometers, you can see it's kind of small, but and when they shut off the lights from the engine, it's above the water, and then reflect on the water and go back up. It literally turns night into day. One second it's sitting there, it's pitch black. The next second it's just like daytime. It's amazing. And the night launches are super, super cool. It's a rare picture because the two shuttles on the launch pad. The main reason we had the space shuttle was to build the International Space Station. The astronauts would get in a shuttle, they go up into space, they put on a spacesuit, they go outside and they build a space station. If there was a problem, Something that could cause them harm or injury, 
they could go inside the space station for safety. But this mission was going to the Hubble telescope, and there was no safe place for them at the Hubble. So they had a second one on the launch pad as a rescue mission, just in case it was necessary. It wasn't necessary. It was one of the few times in the history of the space program they had two active orbiters on the space pad. It's the same picture at night. You can see these things. We're really lit up for night. You can see them for 25 kilometers away. They have huge spotlights on them. And I always say to all of you, if you come to Florida, if you come to Kennedy Space Center and you want to go to the Space Center, come to Florida, get a hold of me. I will give you tickets for Kennedy Space Center. I do this because everyone is so kind to me. When I was in India, everybody was really, really kind. And I appreciate it so much. So if you come to Florida, let me know so I can get you tickets to Kennedy Space Center. But these things are gorgeous at night. You can see them from a road that goes along Kennedy Space Center. I can even get in a boat and see them from the water. And what I like best, I like walking on the beach. So you can actually walk on the beach and you can see them at night from the beach. They're just beautiful to see. This is called the VAB, Vehicle Assembly Building. Most of the time when you see pictures of NASA, you see this great big building. Now, what this building is for, it's called Vehicle Assembly Building. So anything that goes to space is called a vehicle. It has to be assembled or put together before it goes to space. And it's done so in this building. 60 years ago, when the astronauts were going to the moon, all the Apollo missions were put together inside this building. The shuttle mission, over a 30-year period, everything was built in here. And right now, Artemis, the future of the space program, was put together in this building. And I don't know if you know, Artemis just went out to the launch pad a couple of days ago. And it's on the launch pad right now. It's getting ready to go to the moon and to and deep space. And it's supposed to launch on November 14th. So if you have the opportunity to see it, I hope you'll watch it. We'll talk a little bit, talk a little bit more about it later. I do race cars. I do race cars for hobby. It's one of the cars I race. It's a lot of fun to drive, on, drive it to work. Sometimes I drive a little too fast. The police don't like it, but I love going fast. It's also a convertible. It has no top. So when I was in India, it was I know it was the start of your winter, but it, for me it was perfect because the weather was in around 30. It was sunny and warm, and I loved the sun, and I loved the heat. So I really enjoyed my time in India. So this is how it gets there. Now, the VAB is over here on the left of the screen, and this is the launch pad. So from here to here is five kilometers. And it's put together on the VAB, and it has to be taken there to go to space. And this is how it gets there. So if you can see right here, this is a little person. Gives you an idea how big it is. This is a crawler transporter. This is a mobile launch platform. And the shuttle actually has four main parts. The part that looks like a plane is called an orbiter because it goes above the Earth and it orbits the Earth. The part in the middle is an orange part is the fuel tank. They take liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Oxygen and hydrogen are two gases in our atmosphere. They take those gases, they make them super cold, and they become the fuel for the launch. And it has two booster rockets. Combined is three million kilos of lift. I will tell you a little about that in a minute. So it takes five hours to go from here to here. And it's really, really pretty. You see how everything is lit up. It's really pretty. It's a big procession. It's so much fun to see it go to the launch pad. So this is what it looks like at launch. Now, I'm going to show you a launch. I want to tell you a little bit about it first. There's three big engines in the orbiter and two booster rockets. Combined is 3 million kilos of lift. So what that means is, for this thing to take off, it's got to push down with 3 million kilos. And this is a lot of force pushing down on Earth. So for those of you who have been on a plane, or if you haven't been on a plane, you get on a plane at a passenger terminal. It takes you to a runway. When it gets to the runway, it stops. And they rev up the engines. They're building power and building power. They have the brakes on, so it can't go anywhere, but they're building power. When they get enough power built up, they take off horizontally. Well, this is doing the same thing, but it's taking off vertically, and it's locked down on the launch pad. So they start the engines, and it's trying to take off, and it's locked down. They're building power and building power, up to 3 million kilos of lift pushing down. We're about 5 kilometers away, which is very, very close. Most of the general public is about 50 kilometers away. So 5 kilometers away, you really feel what's happening when it's trying to take off. So what we see over here, you see, this looks like smoke, but it's actually steam. They put 3 million liters of water on the launch pad for heat and noise suppression. And inside this tank is liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. It's very cold. 
and it sits in the hot Florida sun. Anytime something gets hot, it expands. So the gases may bend out and be all around the orbiter. They don't want to take off that weight. The whole thing might go up in flames. So the first thing you're going to see at the bottom of the orbiter are called igniters. They're just burning off any vented fumes. And what happens is when they start these engines, it's trying to take off. It can't take off. We're five kilometers away. We really can't see it. We really can't hear it, but we feel it. You're standing there watching this thing, and all of a sudden, you get a vibration in your feet, and your whole power to shake. This thing is so powerful, it literally shakes the earth as it's trying to take off. And all of the cars feel it. So the cars think somebody's trying to break in. So horns are honking, lights are flashing, sirens are going off, and your whole body is shaking. It's the most amazing thing. When it takes off, it looks like it goes really slow. Then it makes a big turn, and it's gone. Of course, you'll see the igniters at the bottom of the orbiter. They're burning off any vented fumes. Then they start the engines. This one is building up power and building up power. That's the steam from the water. And all of a sudden, the earth is shaking. It's such a magical sensation. For the first two minutes, they're bouncing around quite a bit. There's seven astronauts on the orbit. After two minutes, the boosters come off and it gets very smooth. Off above the water, about five kilometers above the water, a parachute opens, they fall in the water, the ship goes out, picks them up, they're brought back, cleaned, and reused. Then the orbiter and the tank go up in orbit, the tank falls off and burns up in the atmosphere. If you can imagine you're sitting on Earth eight and a half minutes later, that's all it takes. You're in space. You go from sitting on Earth to eight and a half minutes in space. When I went to India, it took me 40 hours to get to India. They're in space in eight and a half minutes. That's how fast this is going. This is Buzz Lightyear. Now, Buzz Lightyear was brought in a space program to make it fun for kids. Remember, everything should be fun. You can be very successful and have fun. It doesn't mean you don't try hard. It doesn't mean you don't do your best. It just means you enjoy what you do. And this is so important. Now, Buzz Lightyear is named after a very famous astronaut, Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin was the second person to walk on the moon. And that's where Buzz Lightyear got his name. So a few years ago, I was on the beach and somebody said to me, hey, Gabe, do you want to meet Buzz? And I said, Buzz who? And they said, Buzz Aldrin. I said, the guy that was on the moon? And they said, yes. I said, of course. So I got the opportunity on the beach for about one hour we talked about what it was like 60 years ago for the astronauts to go to the moon. What it was like for 60 years ago to try to build these ships. You know, our cell phones that we have now have more capability than these huge computers they had 60 years ago. So they were able to do that. But it was something really special. I will never forget this opportunity. We also have Woody. What is that? All the launches when the astronauts leave, he waves goodbye. And when they come back, he's clapping just like the rest of us. I don't know if any of you can tell me, but I'm going to try to ask the question, see if somebody can tell me. Do anybody know what this is? Is it a sonic boom? I'm not sure how I can. Yes, a sonic boom. Excellent. I'm not, I'm not sure who said that, but yes, excellent. To give you an idea how fast this goes, if you're on Earth and you have a rifle, now you know a rifle is a very powerful gun. The bullet from that rifle goes 3,000 kilometers per hour. Think how fast a rifle bullet is. But you're in the shuttle and you're going in space. You're going 27,000 kilometers per hour. You're going nine times faster than a rifle bullet. If you can imagine how fast that is for that huge ship to break through the atmosphere to get into space. This is called the orbiter processing facility. Remember that I told you the part that looks like a plane is actually called an orbiter. And I want to talk to the girls. 
I want the guys to listen, but I want to talk to the girls. It's very, very important. I want you to know, as a girl, you can do anything just like the guys. A lot of times girls are told you can't do this. It's only for boys. That's not true. One of the greatest things about the shuttle program, prior to the shuttle program in America, no women were involved in the space program. 100% guys. But with the advent of the shuttle program, many, many women engineers got involved. Now women do everything the same as the guys. They fly the orbiter, they navigate the orbiter, and they maintain the orbiter. It's really important. I want you all to know you can do anything you choose, but especially the girls, because sometimes you tell you can't do it. It's only for boys, but that's not true. You can do anything you want to do just like the guys. And we are different. We think differently. So when you put us together, we get a much better product. So this girl, her job is to put the engine back in the orbiter. When the orbiter comes back from space, it's taken all apart. Everything is checked and it's put back together. The same with the engine. It's taken out. Everything is checked and it has to be put back in the orbiter. So she's sitting on a forklift with a handheld controller who moves the forks up and down, side to side, in and out. And she has to guide this engine into the orbiter. She hits the engine on the side of the orbiter. She could damage the engine, damage the orbiter, create millions of dollars worth of damage, and delay the mission. So it's critical she does it correctly. It takes her three hours for one engine. She never makes a mistake. She's awesome. I want all of you to know, girls and guys, you can do anything you want. I love being by the beach. You always hear me talk. Always here talking about the beach because I love the beach. And the shuttle pads, they're very close to the beach. So when we have these launches, we have these gorgeous sunrises and sunsets near the beach. This is the ISS, the International Space Station. The reason we had this shuttle was to build the ISS. The reason it stopped flying, there wasn't something wrong with it. The ISS was completed. It took 12 years to build the ISS. This was five years. This was eight years. And this is how it looks now. It's completed. And that's why the shuttle stopped flying. I don't know if any of you have seen ISS go over your house in India. It's really simple to do. If you haven't seen it or you would like to see it, all you have to do is Google see the ISS. Or you can go to the NASA website, nasa.gov. When you go to that site, you'll see a bunch of drop downs. One of them will say missions. You click on missions, it will come down, say ISS, and it will ask you to see the ISS. Or you can just Google. See the ISS. It asks you for your home address and your email. And 24 hours before it comes over your house, it tells you where to look and how long you can see it. It doesn't cost anything. It's free. So try to remember to do that. It looks like a really bright star. But you know, when you see a star, you're not seeing the star. You're seeing the light from the star. And it's stationary. It's not moving. But with the ISS, you can see it for four or five minutes going across the sky. A few years ago, I was in Australia. And when we saw it in Australia, because of the angle of the sun, it was amazing. It was red. So we can imagine seeing this red star going across the sky. It was very, very special. Something I will never forget. This gives you an idea how big it is. Now, this is an American football field, which is a lot bigger than a, Bra uh, an, a Brazilian or an Indian, space, an Indian football field. And you can see it's much bigger than a football field. It's going around the Earth at 26,000 kilometers per hour. Every time it goes around the Earth, the astronauts, it takes 90 minutes to go around one time. And the astronauts see the sunrise 16 times every day they're in space. And they're in microgravity, so they're floating. On Earth, it would weigh almost 500,000 kilos. In space, it weighs nothing. There's 16 nations involved in building the International Space Station. Now, ISRO, ISRO was not involved at this time, but ISRO now has a wonderful space program. So I think anything in the future, ISRO and, and NASA combined to do for the different things. But ISRO is a critical part of the space program all around the world right now. So this is a little movie to show you how it was put together. Each one of these pieces was put in a cargo bay. In the back of the orbiter, two doors open, and they put this piece in. It goes up to space. The part on the top are called solar rays. They take energy from the sun. They convert it to electricity. That's what's used to power the space station. The diagonal part right here, this is called a truss. Many of you will study engineering. You know, a truss is something that gives a structure strength. All structures have trusses. 
on earth and everywhere else, just to provide strength. The round or cylindrical parts, this is where the astronauts live and stay. And when they go up in space, they stay up there for six months. They're learning to live in a weightless environment. They're doing a lot of medical experiments in a sterile environment. I like to show you this because it's three-dimensional. It gives you an idea how huge it is and why it took so long to put together. So one of the things I like to talk about, it's so important for all of you. You want to enjoy learning. The more fun you have learning, the easier it will be and the longer you'll remember it. Try different things. We all learn differently. See what works best for you and apply it to everything you do. But you want to enjoy learning. This is so important. When I was in high school, my sister and I, we would get on a bus. We would go to school. We'd spend a day in school. We'd get on a bus and we'd come home. She would go in her room and she would turn on music and she would sing and dance to her lessons. She made learning fun. And I, I used to look at her and I think, oh, what's wrong with you? You could be outside. You could be at the beach. Why are you in here singing and dancing? But she made her lessons fun. And this is something you want to do. It's so important. The habits you learn and develop in the beginning of your education, you will take with you everywhere you go. And I don't care what you study in school. When you get a job, you're going to learn by doing. And you're going to use the same habits you create now. So try different things. See what works best for you. For the astronauts, they have to go up in space. And they have to build a space station while they're floating. And they're going 26,000 kilometers per hour around the Earth. Well, on Earth, everything, some gravity holds us down. We really can't float on Earth, but we can float in water on Earth. So NASA said, okay, let's train floating in water like we do floating in space. But we don't want to float on top of the water. Gravity will still affect us. We want to float below the surface of the water. So remember that movie I showed you about Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas? This is where the astronauts live and train. So they have to train to go to space to build a space station while they're floating. And what NASA did said, okay, let's float in this pool just like we do in space. But well, we don't want to float on top of the water. Probably it will still affect us. We want to float below the surface of the water. So if we jump in the water, our body is what's called buoyant. It means we float in water. So in Houston, Texas, they built a great big pool, and they gave it a fancy name. This pool is 14 meters deep by 50 meters wide by 40 meters long, and they call it a neutral buoyancy laboratory. Buoyancy means you float. Neutral buoyancy means you don't float, you don't sink. So our body is buoyant. If we jump in the water, we float on top. So they take a weight belt proportional to your weight, put it around your waist to go down seven meters in this 14-meter pool, and you stay there. You don't go up, you don't go down. That's called neutral buoyancy. And they practice for a whole year everything going to do in space. This guy's getting ready to go in the water. You see everything is the same. Space suit, you see laboratory. This is part of the trust. Now, you know, trust is a big metal piece. If you put it in the water, it's going to sink to the bottom. So they prop it up in a neutral buoyancy state. This girl, she's getting ready to go in the water. Now, everywhere she goes, two divers accompany her. In case there's a problem, they can get her right out of the water. This is something that looks real simple, putting a screw on a wall. Well, for those of you who come to Florida, come to Kennedy Space Center, I always say to come to my house afterwards. We'll have pizza. And it's so much fun to do this. And I love to do it with you because you give me so much when I visit India. You are so kind. So when you come to America or come to Florida, I try to give back to you. And I have a shop at my house where I build cars. You know, we can go in the shop and play around, whatever you like to do while you're there. But you know, putting a screw in a wall on Earth is very simple. Use your body strength and torque. It's very simple. But in space, when you're floating, it becomes much more complicated. It's so important you learn to work together and learn to help each other out. You know, one of the greatest things I saw when I was in India, you all seem to get along so well. You know, all of the kids hold hands. Most of the girls are holding hands. The guys are always close together. It looks like you're just having fun, enjoying each other's company. And this is what you want to learn to do. You have to learn to be a team. There's nothing is as critical as being a team. That's one of the reasons I love sports. In order to be successful in sports, you have to be a team. Everybody has a role. Nobody is more important than the next person. And when you join together and you become this team, you're very, very successful. So I like to ask how many of you have a BFF, a best friend forever? 
I know I saw in India when I was there, many people said they have a BFF. Well, I have a BFF in America. I have some in India too, but I have a one in America who's a very special guy. This is Randall. Randall is my BFF. Randall's 100% blind. He cannot see anything, but he does everything. So I want you all to think from this day forward, I don't care what you do, where you go, you have a new BFF. His name is Randall. He's going to go everywhere you go. And if you think you can't do something, Randall is going to say to you, I'm blind. I can do it. So can you. Never be afraid to do something. Never be concerned about what's going to happen. Anytime you have an opportunity to try something, try it. Your new BFF, Randall, he's going to go everywhere you go. And if you think you can't do something, Randall is going to say to you, I'm blind. I can do it. So can you. So never think you can do, can't do something. And remember, I want to tell you something so important. You can never fail. Never. Anytime you do something, you learn. And when you learn, you become a better and wiser person. So you never fail. You always learn. Never be afraid to try something. Randall's going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. We're going to tell you, you can do this. You cannot fail. It's so important. This astronaut, she's a neutral buoyancy. She's not going up. She's not going down. She's practicing working on this piece of the space station. It was actually a piece that was developed by Canada. Next thing I want to show you, what it's like to be up in space. But you know, when you're up in space, nothing weighs anything. Your body doesn't weigh anything. Nothing weighs anything. So in space, just me moving around and moving my arm, I'm building my muscle. It's a resistance. But in space, there's no resistance. So you don't build muscle and you're up there. When you come back to the Earth, you'll flop on the floor. Or if you're going on a ship from one planet to another and you're on that ship for six months or more, when you get there, you won't be able to function because you will have no muscles. So it's very, very important to exercise every day, just like on Earth. Now, they have three things they use. They have a stationary bike, a lot like we have on Earth, but it has no seat. You don't need a seat because you're floating. So they're bungeed onto this seat. The second thing looks like a treadmill, but and it's a lot not like a treadmill on Earth. But it's not on a floor horizontally. It's on a wall like the you know, There's a module on a space station, space station called Cupola. Cupola is an Italian module built in Italy, and it's a big glass window, and it's the bottom of the space station. So when they're running on the treadmill, they're able to be above this window, and they're looking down, they can see the earth going around them. It's really special for them to do that.
meet up on the space station. Every once in a while, he comes down and says hello and goes back up. So I always ask, I know I can't see your hands, but I always ask how many of you would like to go up in space? It's so much fun. I would love to go in space. You know, my job is like a civil structural engineer. So I deal with roads and bridges, the infrastructure, the buildings, the roofs, mechanical systems. That's kind of what I did when I was at Kennedy Space Center. So I really didn't get to go to space, but I would love to go to space. Every day when I was at the Space Center, when I would drive into work, I would bring a little bag with me. And they said, Gabe, we have one seat. I was gone. I was packed and ready to go. So I hope some of you will think about it. The future is going to be many opportunities for you to do this. And if you think you'd like to do it, I really encourage you to do it. If you think you'd like to be an astronaut, I encourage you to try. You know, very few people get to be an astronaut, but it doesn't matter. Even if you try and even if you don't make it, you're going to have such a great education. You can do almost anything you like. The next thing I want to show you, what it's like to be in space and look down on the Earth. So you see how all of the continents are lit up. The astronauts can see the whole continent from space. They see this huge electrical storm, hundreds of kilometers long. It's part of the top is what is called the ionosphere that separates our atmosphere from space. Remember, every 90 minutes on the new day, you see the sunrise six feet high. These are the solar arrays, they're <laughs> <laughs> This is my favorite part, the northern lights. The northern lights happen when solar storms come from the sun. They come from the sun, the tremendous electrons. One of the fun things for me being at Kennedy Space Center, the astronauts are in Houston, Texas. When they want to go to space, they come from Houston, they go to Florida, they get on a ship and they go up in space. We get to hang out with them for a week or so before they go to space. When they come back down after six months, we get to talk to them again. And it's really fun because when we say to them, look, you are up in space for six months. What was your favorite thing to do? And all of those six months, if you had to pick one thing, what was your favorite thing to do? Every single one of them says the same thing. They love looking out the window. They love looking down on the earth. They love looking at the solar system. And they say the stars are beautiful at night. Above our atmosphere, the stars are much clearer. And you can see different sizes and different colors. So they love looking at space from above our atmosphere. This is really cool. We also have, a, we talked about a solar storm coming from space that gives us the aurora borealis. We also have a solar flare. A solar flare comes with ions, protons, and electrons. And when it hits our atmosphere, it turns the sky into this. Can you imagine going outside tonight and looking at the sky instead of a black sky? You will see a sky with all these multitudes of colors all dancing around. And scientists track solar flares. So if you hear a solar flare coming to the Earth and you're anywhere close to it, try to see it. Something you'll remember for the rest of your life. The future of the space program involves going to Mars. People say, well, why do we want to go to Mars? 
What's the fascination with Mars? The scientists believe billions of years ago, Mars was a lot like Earth. It had oceans and lakes and rivers. It even had an environment like Earth. So they think something may have been alive on Mars at one time or may be alive today. So that's one reason they want to go explore. So many of you have probably had your geometry, and for those of you who haven't had geometry, when you think of means, they look the same, but they're different. It's the same with Earth and Mars. Their planet Earth is spinning at 1,600 kilometers per hour. It takes 24 hours to go around one time. That's called a day. Mars is spinning at 800 kilometers per hour. It takes 24 hours and 37 minutes to go one around one time. That's called the soul. And they're both tilted at the same axis. So that's why the similarities are there. And that's why they uh, scientists believe something may have been alive on Mars at one time. If it hasn't happened to you, it will happen to you. Somebody is going to say to you, the Earth is flat. <laughs> if somebody says to you, the Earth is flat, all you do is say yes and walk away. Don't waste your time trying to argue. Don't waste your time trying to change your mind. They just want to argue. Just say yes and walk away. But we know the Earth is round, and we know it's really, really pretty. Now, with the James Webb Telescope, if you've seen some of the pictures coming back from the James Webb, you see how the planets look now. They are much, much different than we'd seen them in the past. They're more colorful. They have rings. They have so many different features we weren't able to see before. But some of them are really pretty. But I still think our Earth is the prettiest planet in our solar system. Okay, let's jump on a ship and go to Mars. What's well, not quite that simple? There's something called opposition. What opposition means, things are moving. You know, if you're in one city in India and you drive from one city to the next, nothing is moving. You just drive from one city to the next. But with Earth and Mars, remember, Mars, Earth is spending at 1,600 kilometers. It's going around the Earth at 110,000 kilometers per hour. Now, think about that. It's going 110,000 kilometers per hour around the earth it's going really really fast and it's spinning we don't feel it because it's so big it takes 365 days for earth to go around the sun one time this is called a year now many people who like astronomy or like talking about astronomy will say to their friends not happy birthday but i wish you a happy trip around the sun which just means i wish you a happy year ahead so if you have a friend having a birthday in the next few days just say to them I wish you a happy trip around the sun. They might look at you a little strange, but it's something fun to do. Mars is spinning at 800 kilometers per hour. It's going around the sun at 86,000 kilometers per hour. It takes 687 days for Mars to go around the sun. So the Earth is spinning, Mars is spinning, they're going around the sun, different speeds, different orbits. You want to launch something from Earth and have it land on Mars over 400 million kilometers away. In this beginning of the space, program they had troubles but now they have it down pretty good so this little rover i'm going to see if i can move this thing out of the way a little bit i can't it says hide but i can't hide it if i try to hide it it will shut off this presentation so this little rover this rover is called spirit it went to mars 19 years ago to look for water so if you look at all this area around spirit you see all of these rocks and they think this was a huge lake at one time. If you have a lake in India, a big lake, a body of water, and it dries up, you will see at the bottom all of these different rocks. They call that sediment. So they think this was a huge lake at one time. So the rovers were sent to Mars to look for water because scientists believe if water exists, life exists. And they have found a lot of water on Mars. So I don't know if you remember at the beginning of the presentation, I told you I wanted you all to come to Florida with me. I want every one of you listening, I don't care how many are, let's all go to Florida and let's go to the beach and we're going to watch a launch. This is what we do every single time. This rover weighs about and we'll send them all. So what I want you to understand, we're all going to go to the beach together. When we get to the beach, there's a public address system where we hear engineers in the launch control center talking to the launch director. And in this launch control center, about a hundred engineers. Each engineer is monitoring one system on the rocket and reporting to a launch director that each is good. When all the systems are good, the launch director will say go for launch. But I want you to do something. 
Remember those. Do your best. You can learn these three things. You will always be successful. You will have fun. You will never have work. Nothing will be hard. No stress. No pressure. So I want you to teach with me, and I want you to do something. This is going to to rock with nine boosters. When it takes off, you want you to see. You're going to hear the talking to the launch. So I don't know what's going on. I can hear the background. Do you know what that is? Or can you stop that stuff? So, <laughs> I think it stopped. So I, hopefully you stopped it. I just think it's, I don't know if it's hard for you to hear when I'm talking over that sound, but it's hard for me to hear. So what I want you to do, I want you to come to Beachwood and you're going to hear these engineers talking to a launch director. And the launch director, when all of the engineers say, uh, everything is good, the launch director, they go for launch. So what I want you to do, you're going to hear the counting down, 10, 9, 8. I want you to count down with it. All do this every launch. Nine, eight. When we get to zero, we all jump up and down and clap. So I want, do, but I want you to do your best. Challenge yourself. How well can I count from zero? And just try to count down. If it's a Delta Rock with nine, you will hear it counting down. This comes from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. This is part of a 400 million kilometers from Earth. So this rover weighs about 200 kilos. It's in this snowstorm on this Delta rocket. Now you hear something the launch director name on. Very high. Um, excuse me. Yes. Um, Mr. Gabe, the screen is not visible. Not visible? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure why I see it okay. But like most of us, most of us are not able to see it. Okay, I, I'm okay, but I'm getting a lot of noise in the background. Do you know what that is? Okay, okay, so we'll keep going, but uh, you know, as long as everybody can see it for this one person, I don't know why you can't see it, but if everybody else is seeing it, it must be something with your. Your internet connection, I'm not sure. Okay, so we're going to continue. So you see on the nine boosters, when it gets to a certain speed, certain altitude, the boosters will start coming off. Okay, so we're going to continue with the boosters. Okay, so we're going to continue with the boosters. They call Earth a pretty blue planet because of all the water. So you're going to see a lot of different pieces on this mission. Each piece has a function. Some are for navigation to keep it going in the right direction. Some are for propulsion to keep it going at the right speed. It's going to overcome all those variables of the planet spinning around the sun, different speeds and different orbits. So it's constantly adjusting. You see when it goes by the sun, you'll see the sun and all the billions of stars in our solar system. And I want you to think about something. If you're on a ship and you're going to Mars, it's going to take you seven months to get there. So you're going to be on this ship for seven months. That's why you've got to stay mentally and, and physically fit. 
So it goes through Mars's atmosphere. Mars's atmosphere is thin, but still, any time something goes through the atmosphere, it generates a lot of heat. It has to have a heat shield to protect it. First big parachute opens to slow it down. Then the heat shield will fall away. <laughs> when the heat shield falls away, it's in this canister. This is an inflatable canister with about a hundred meter long rope. When it gets fully extended, it inflates. It's still going very fast. So fire some rocks to slow it down. About 50 meters above the surface. They just let it go. And it bound 400 million kilometers. It took seven months to get there. It's very fragile. And this is how it landed. Everything had to work perfectly. So you see all of these rocks. They think this was a huge lake at one time filled with water. So first it deflates. It's kind of balanced, so it land on its feet. Solar panels unfold. They take energy from the sun. They convert it to electricity. That's what's used to power the rover. Then a TV camera comes up. And it starts exploring Mars. So we'll send Mars to find water and try to find out how long ago Mars had water. So they found a lot of water on Mars, below the surface and above the surface. So this is computer generated. It shows it traveling around Mars. But what it really does, it goes seven meters and it stops. It sends a picture back to Earth, back to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, where geologists or scientists will analyze it, tell it what to do for the next seven meters. So it's got sensors in it that can determine if water was present at any time. But it wants to know when water is water present. So what it, what it does, it travels, just like you have a computer game at home, a joystick. They have engineers in Pasadena driving it around, to making sure it doesn't run over something that's tipped over. But just like you have a game at home, they have the same real life game in California. So you'll see if it comes up on a large rock, it might hit that rock and tip over. So we'll navigate around the rock here. Then it says, okay, a scientist, well, let's see. They found some water in the soil. Let's see how long ago it might have been there. So it has a drill in the front. It has a drill. It will unfold. It will drill a hole in the rock. They look at the center or the inside. The outside can change from age or weather, but the inside will be exactly the way it was when it was formed. And it sends a picture back to Earth. So you'll see inside this picture, you're gonna see a bunch of lines. Each one of these lines represents a segment in time. Based on the number of lines and distance between them, a geologist can say how old that rock is. Found a lot of water on Mars. We can't drink it, it's acidic. But in the future, they will send something to Mars to take that acidic water and convert it to drinking water for astronauts. And it's really important because if we can find things on the planet to help us sustain life ourselves, it saves us the trouble and expense of bringing it all the way from Earth to Mars. This is another rover. Now, this rover is really, really special. It's called Curiosity. Curiosity is much different than Spirit. It weighs a 1,000 kilos. And it's nuclear powered. See, it's got these big wheels, like a big wheeler on Earth. So it can explore a lot more. It's also got a really cool laser. It can shoot a laser at a rock and blow it apart and analyze it. And if it likes what it sees, it has a big drill. It can take a drill and drill a hole in the rock, take a sample, and put it in the back. I'm sure many of you had chemistry. In, in America, when we have chemistry, we have a chem class and a chem lab. In the chem lab, you do a lot of cool experiments. So you might walk in the lab one day and a teacher says, here, what is this? And you've got to figure it out. You put run different tests on it. 
put acid on it, you heat it up, you do different tests to see what it isn't. Basically, that's how you find out what it is. Now, they were sent to Mars to look for light. So they can take a sample, put it in the back where they have these ovens and analyze it and look for light. So remember, in the beginning, I asked you to do those three things. Do your best, enjoy what you do, believe in yourself. And I want to prove something to you. If you did your best last time, counting from 10 to 0, probably the first time you've done it. So it was the first time you've done it. Many of you did it, and you did it pretty good, but you're doing it for the first time. Now I'm going to ask you to do it again. So if you do it again, you did your first best last time, you do your best this time, you will get better. It applies to everything you do. So if you want to do something, just do your best. It doesn't matter what happens. Feel good about your effort. If it's not what you want, it's okay. Do it again because every time you do something, you learn and you get better and better. You become a wiser person. And eventually you'll get what you want, but always feel good about yourself. So I want you to count down again, just like you did last time. I just want you to do your best. So this is an Atlas rocket. It starts at 10, 9, 8. But when it gets to 1, it does look to 0. You had to start the engines and rev up. Only 200 kilos. It was come straight off the pad. But this weighs a thousand kilos. So it's all up to you. It counts out. It'll say main engine start. And they say zero. That's about one o'clock. Just leave. Economic seven, six, four. Main engine start. Zero. We do this every launch throughout the other It's so much fun. Fun. First thing you get a big parachute over. The videos are split. You're looking right outside. It's like with the with the you basically go to the map site. You can it's JPL site. JPL.gov. Sending back live feed from Mars. It looks a lot like curiosity. Sophisticated. Curiosity went up 11 years ago. This went up last year. So when you look at perseverance, one of the most important things it's doing is something called Moxie. What Moxie is doing, Mars's atmosphere is carbon dioxide. We cannot breathe it. It will kill us. But it wants to take the oxygen from the carbon dioxide and convert it to breathing air for astronauts in the future. It's really important there's a weather station. Why do have the weather station? If you go to Mars, it takes you seven months to get there. You start here and you land when the planets are here. But you have to stay 23 months before you can come back. Because once it gets here, then the planets are getting further and further away. You've got to wait until they're close enough again to come back. So you're going to be on Mars for 23 months. We could probably go to Mars today, but we can't survive for 23 months. Mars's atmosphere is harsh. It's terrible. The weather is terrible. You can't breathe the air. Radiation is a huge problem because Mars's atmosphere is thin. So radiation is really bad. They have these huge sandstorms that engulf the whole planet. And if you're in a, a dome barrier and you get taking the carbon dioxide and you convert it to oxygen and you have all that sand going around, it may complicate everything. So the media station is really, really important. It's also got something really cool. It can take a sample of the Mars soil and store it. 
and it's doing that right now. This is happening real time. And what they're going to do, they're going to store these samples. In the future, they're going to come get them, bring them back to Earth, and they're going to analyze them, see what's on Mars. But this is happening real time. You can see it right now. If you just go to the JPL site, jpl.nasa.gov. This is what's going to happen in the future. This is Perseverance. That's the American rover. This is the European Space Agency rover. They're going to pick up all the samples around Mars. They're going to load them on this ship. And then on this ship, they're going to take them back to Earth. It's really cool. And this is happening right now. It's a little helicopter. Now, this helicopter is flying around Mars. Think of the engineering feat that went into this. Mars's atmosphere is very thin. So for something to fly in a thin atmosphere, it has to have a large lift because it just there's no nothing to pull against when you're lifting up in a helicopter. This helicopter weighs about two kilos. It's nuclear powered. It's traveling around Mars. It's looking for places for perseverance and curiosity to explore, as well as take samples. This is a movie to show you what it's like to see the stars. I love this movie. See the stars on Mars. <laughs> Look at the night sky. You see all these billions of stars every night, just like we would on Earth if there were no lights. <laughs> movie gives you an idea if it was completely black on earth what we would see in the sky every night so this is what scientists believe mars looked like billions of years ago it had oceans and lakes and rivers it even had an atmosphere like earth. So they think something may have lived on mars at one time or may be alive today when well, they say what happened to mars what changes from this to what it is today and they thought at first they thought maybe a great big meteorite crashed through mars's atmosphere put a big hole in it, and all escaped. But a few years ago, they came up with another theory. We talked about solar storms and solar flares coming from the sun. They come at tremendous speed. They bounce off our atmosphere, oxygen and nitrogen, to give us all those pretty lights. But our planet Earth has a strong magnetic core that protects it. Mars has a weak magnetic core. So I think as these, Mar these solar storms and solar flares were coming at Mars at tremendous speed and hitting the atmosphere, as it was rotating over billions of years, it eroded away to what it is today. This looks like a NASA shirt. It was actually a shirt that was given to me by a group of kids in South Africa. The name of the school is Laker School, Artban Van Wow. And the bottom says, Live Your Dream. Of course, there's something I really want to talk to you about. If you don't listen to anything else or you don't remember anything else, try to remember this. It's so important. Remember those three things. Do your best. Do your best is pretty easy. Challenge yourself. How well can you do something? You know, something I'm I do it left handed, I do it right handed, just to challenge myself to see how well I can do it. But try to always challenge yourself to do your best. Whatever happens, it doesn't matter. Appreciate your effort. If it's not what you want, do it again and keep doing it till you get what you want. But always appreciate your effort. Enjoy everything you do. This is a little more challenging because sometimes we have things we don't like. But we have to do them. So one of the times I was at a presentation and a girl said to me, I have to take this course and I hate this course. How am I supposed to enjoy it? I said, listen, that course is a stepping stone to something else. Don't look at it as a negative. It's taking you where you want to go. Without this course, you can't get there. So look at it as a positive. Enjoy everything you do. And the most important part, believe in yourself. Very few people have that. That's why they have stress. That's why they have pressure. They don't have that strong belief in themselves. If you learn to develop that belief in yourself, you'll never have stress. You'll never have pressure. Well, how do you do that? It's so hard for so many people. Very few people have it. I don't care how successful they are, how much money they have. There are very few people who have a belief in themselves. That's why they have stress. That's why they have pressure. If you 
learn to develop that belief in yourself to a strong degree, you never have stress. You always think you can do it. You're never concerned about everything. So how do you get that? It's so important. You know, I hate bullies. Bullies have no self-esteem. Bullies have no belief in themselves. They tear others down to try to make themselves look good. They really have no self-esteem. They're really miserable people. So what you want to do, let's say you have a dream. Take your dream and write it down and say, this is my goal. And ask yourself, what steps do I take to achieve it? And plan small steps. Don't be in a hurry. The smaller the step, the easier it is to accomplish. The easier it is to accomplish, the more confidence, the more belief you get in yourself. And you want to build that very, very slowly over a long period of time. Don't be in a hurry. Go slow. When you go slow, things are much easier. They're much easier to do. And when you're studying, if you go slow, you remember it longer. So always build those steps slowly. And you want to build and build and build. And one day, you will say to yourself, I can do anything. And when you believe you can do anything, you'll never have stress. You'll never have pressure. When you learn to enjoy everything you do, you will never work. Nothing will ever be hard. And this is my goal for you. This is what I want more than anything out of the presentation, to understand that you can have a very happy life and be very successful. Just those three things. It's 100% mental. Learn to do that and develop things slowly. Anytime you find yourself in a difficult situation, slow down. Things will get easier, better to accomplish. Most people do just the opposite. They try to do more and more and more. They just get stress and pressure. The extent that they're miserable, you don't want that in your life. So just like I was talking to you, this was given to me by a group of third graders, eight-year-old kids in Africa. And I'm talking to you the same I talked to them, live your dream. Their dream was to come to America. So the girls went out, did fashion shows. The boys did car washes. They raised enough money to come to America. And we got to do kind of really cool things. They went to Florida for two weeks. We got to go to the beach. I love going to the beach. We got to go to Disney World, SeaWorld, all the cool attractions. We even lucked out and got on a bus. All 55 of us went to the Space Center to see a launch. So it was really, really a great opportunity. And it's really important to me. You know, if you ask me to do something, I will do it for you. I don't care what it is. I try to do everything. I'm on. I'm writing with kids eight hours a day from around the world. I do four in the morning and four at night every single day just writing to things you tell me. I had a lot of correspondence on Instagram. Instagram over the last few months, I've got thousands of people writing to me on Instagram. I try to acknowledge every comment. I try to answer when I can. It's really, really important. So the kid said to me, Gabe, we came to Africa. We came to America. We want you to go to Africa. My first thought is, why would I go to Africa? It's so far away, and what am I going to do when I get there? But I felt it was important. The kids came to America, I would go to Africa. In the course of doing that, I got to live a dream of mine I never thought would happen. And I want to share this with you. I want you to know, never give up on your dreams. They can happen when you least expect them. Never give up on them. And when I went to Africa, my dream actually came to come true. It's a dream I had as a little kid. I'd kind of given up on it, but it came true in Africa. And I want to share that with you. Just South Africa, all of the kids wear India uh, wear uniforms, just like in India. Everybody wears a uniform. This was at elementary school. There was 800 kids in this audience. All the classes made signs. This was a fifth grade sign, which I just thought was kind of cute. When I went into third graders' classroom, they all made space costumes so we could go up and study space. I usually send a lot of things to school when I was in India. I brought up a lot of gifts for kids in the school. Something you can look at and remind yourself of some of the things we talk about. I know we can't do this virtually, but hopefully you'll find something that you can remember from this and you will use it to help yourself in the future. This was at high school. They took 400 kids from uh, 20 kids from 20 schools. They put them all together and I was speaking with them. My favorite thing to do when I go to schools is hang out with you. More than anything, I want to hang out with you. I feel I can learn so much from you. When you ask me questions, it, it helps me to be better prepared for other kids who ask me questions. So I can learn so much from you that I can share with others. It's my favorite thing to do. I know we can't do this because this is virtual, but when I was in India a few weeks ago, we did it every time. So we're, hopefully we'll have some time afterwards for some questions. We can kind of hang out that way. In the future, when I go back to India, hopefully you'll come by and I'll get to meet you. 
This was a little baby elephant. That was so much fun. It was just like a little puppy. And when I was in India, I was kidding around. I said, you know, everybody I know, everybody in India has an elephant. It's so much fun to play with this elephant. And I got to do a fun thing. I got to ride an elephant. I love to go fast. And you say, well, elephant isn't fast, but you're bouncing around side to side, jumping up and down. It was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. And this is my dream. I'm a cat lover. So I always dreamed about playing with baby lions. So when I got to Africa, the first thing I said, how can I play with baby lions? Can somebody help you play with baby lions? So we found a place where there was four little lion cubs. These lion cubs are two months old. They're just like kittens. They purr and they bite and they scratch, they jump around. They're just so much fun. But if you look at this little lion, this lion is two months old. It weighs about 20 kilos. And if you look at its paws, it's almost as big as I'm feeding it a bottle. His paws are almost as big as my hand. It's got super sharp claws, super sharp teeth, and it's very strong. So when I was laying on the ground playing with this thing, they were actually playing with me, all four of them. They would drag me one place, jump on me. I would jump on them. It was so much fun. Never give up on your dreams. They can happen when you least expect them. Now, if you have a little kitten and you play with this kitten, you stick your finger in the mouth and bite across your finger, you don't feel a thing. It's a lot of fun. But this thing has super sharp teeth super sharp claws and when you stuck your hand in his mouth and it bit you he created some holes a little bit of scars but it was the most fun thing i ever did and i do this with my cats at home so i try it with the lion it's just so much fun then only a couple more things and then hopefully we'll have time for questions what i want to talk to you about now is the future of the space program the future of the space program is called artemis now, I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but there's a mission right now on the launch pad. It just came from the VAB, the Vehicle Assembly Building, to the launch pad. It's called Artemis. Now, Artemis got its name in the 60s and 70s when astronauts went to the moon. They went under Apollo. Apollo is the Greek god who loved the moon. They went under the Apollo mission, and that's what's 100% guys. That's why it was called Apollo. Artemis is Apollo's twin sister. She's a goddess who loves the moon. And it's really cool for me because I have a twin sister. So he's got a twin sister, and her name is Artemis. That's where it got the name. Artemis is going to take women to the moon for the first time and to Mars for the first time. Guys are going to go as well, but women are going to go first. That's why it's called Artemis. And this is what it looks like. It's on the launch pad right now at KSC. If you go to the NASA site, nasa.gov, you will see it on the launch pad. <clears throat> so this is called SLS, Space Launch Systems. The name of the capsule is Orion. So a few months ago, they took it out to the launch pad, and it was super cool. They had what was called a blood moon. The moon was down here. It was red. It looked just like the sun. As the mission, as Artemis got closer to the launch pad, the moon rose. And when it got on the launch pad, the moon was right beside it, which was really cool because it's going to go to the moon. So the last thing I'm going to talk to you about, one thing, I'm, I want to show you a little bit about how this thing launches and how it was made. So I asked you to count down twice. You did really well. You got better each time. I'm going to ask you to do it one more time. Now, you see a countdown clock over here. I think it starts at 16 or 15. Just count down with it. Do your best. You've done it twice. Each time you do it, you learn. I know you can do it better. And I prove it to you. If you do your best every time, you get better every time. So count down with it. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Okay, stop, stop. The future is on the horizon. Okay, go. 4, 3, 2, 1. Wait, wait, stop, stop. How will we take the next step? This is no glass off. We all jump up and down the top. Come on. I can't see you, but I hear you. Jump up and down the top. Every journey starts with a great ship. The Space Launch System, or SLS, will allow explorers to make greater discoveries than ever imagined. <coughs> SLS will take us further than Apollo. 
carry more than the space shuttle and enable unfathomable scientific breakthroughs. SLS stands on the shoulders of legacy systems and is teaming with industry, other government agencies, and academia to build the largest and most capable rocket in history. Cost-effective and efficiently designed, SLS will demonstrate new technology, foster innovation, and be the engineering marvel of our generation. Production of SLS is happening right now. Boosters are being built. Engines are being tested. Manufacturing has begun. The Space Lawn System is an extraordinary undertaking in America's long and storied history of unthinkable human accomplishments. <laughs> It's time to take the next step. The space launch system will lead the way. So this is SLS and, and Artemis. It's on the launch pad right now. It's going to launch it just after midnight on November 14th. So I think it's like 9.30 in the morning, India time. Try to watch this. Nothing like this has ever launched before. It's the most powerful rocket ever built. It's never been launched itself. It's gonna to go to the moon. It's gonna go around the moon. Then it's gonna to go to deep space. It's a test mission to see how everything looks. So we only have a little bit of time left. I hopefully we'll have some more time for questions. I just wanna to talk to you about one more thing. I mentioned to you earlier, I've been to 16 countries around the world doing this. I've been to India twice. I had such a great time in India. But people, kids always say to me, hey, Gabe, you know, I have a question for you. Doesn't matter the age. It doesn't matter the country. I always say, I have this question for you. I'm up in space. I have to go to the bathroom. How do you go to the bathroom in space? So this is a Canadian astronaut. He's been up in space. He's going to tell you how you go to the bathroom in space. When you go to the bathroom on Earth, you're relying on gravity pretty pretty heavily. Imagine if you were halfway done and somebody shut off gravity, it would be a mess. And you'd float off the toilet. So so when we when we designed our space toilet, first it has to have a seat belt on it to hold you down. And then we decided to separate solids and liquids because they're easier to store that way. So we just have a tube that you pee into and it has air pulled into the tube. So it's not a big deal. For the women, there's a cup fits up against them. For the guys, it's just like a little funnel. You just pee into this tube and it goes into a, into a sewage tank. But the solids that come out of your body, that's a harder problem to solve. And it's an important medical one because on earth, everything falls on the floor, but in space, it's gonna float around. So, so it, it'll really make you sick. If you re-ingest something that came out of your body, it will really make you sick. And we can't afford to get that sick. So we designed a toilet that instead of gravity pulling everything into the toilet, it has air flow. There's air pulled down into the toilet. It's sort of windy when you're sitting there, but it pulls everything out of your body. Everything that comes out of your body gets pulled down into the toilet by the air. And then in the storage tank, we just expose that to the vacuum of space. So it basically just freeze dries everything. So it kills all the bacteria so that there's no smell. And then, and then we just store it. And then when you have a whole bunch of it stored, we put it in a little unmanned supply ship and we undock it and it burns up in the atmosphere. So the next time you see a beautiful shooting star going across the sky, <laughs> that's what it might be. I just want to tell you a little bit about this movie, and then we'll have time for some, hopefully some time for questions. I want you to know this movie is a comical way of saying what happens in space. You really can't see this movie. And I want to stress to you, especially the younger kids, you really can't see this ship. We all wish on stars our whole lives. From the time we're little kids to adults, we never stop wishing on stars. The next time you see that star, make your wish. 
go home, write it down and say, this is my goal and ask yourself, what steps do I take to achieve it? And remember, plan small steps. Don't be in a hurry. The smaller the step, easier it is to accomplish. The easier it is to accomplish, the more belief you get in yourself, the more confidence you have in yourself. And you want to build that slowly over a long period of time to the point where you think, I can do anything. And when you believe that, you'll never have stress. You'll never have pressure. And when you enjoy everything you do, you will enjoy your life. And this should be your life. Just like that. It's really simple. It is 100% mental. So we have something called the spinoff. Spinoffs are things that are used in the space program that help us on Earth. People are saying, why do you waste your money going to space? But so many of the things that we learn in space help us on Earth. Plus, many, many medical breakthroughs are done. They're in a sterile environment. They can do so much better testing. So that concludes the presentation. I know it took a little bit longer than we thought, but hopefully we'll have some questions. Have time for questions? I'll be happy to take questions. Yes, yes, great. It's, a, it's an excellent, excellent session for all of us. And uh, I, I have to uh, congratulate you with your one, 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 one photograph has been seen, uh, highlighted by your cell phone as uh, abbreviation of Gabe, G A B E. Great adventure beyond art. Really, it, it, it your session is a, it, it, itself a great Gabe. Uh, uh, great adventure beyond art. Uh, we understand, got chance and scope to understand uh, the uh, universe, even the process which has been conducted in on the art uh, by NASA and uh, what are the uh, uh, process and how it is possible and what are the, the duties of the engineer scientists. So it's, it's an excellent session, sir. So I would Thank like so to much. now, sir. Now I would like to invite one by one some students to if you if they want to uh, uh, ask some questions though they have ra raised their hand so many times ago uh, at the uh, early moment of beginning of the lecture. So one by one I would like to invite uh, first of all uh, Dharja Jain. Please unmute yourself and one by one please come to ask and talk with Gabe. There is a Jane. Yes, sir. So introduce, have... introduce yourself uh, from where you are, if you own our uh, title, uh, etc., class, etc., school, and then uh, ask uh, to uh, talk to Gabe. Okay. My name is Dharya Jain. I am from Mumbai. I study in St. Mary's ICC school in grade 6. I have earned the uh, title of student scientist. Uh, and Sir Banit is the host of this competition. And I have three questions I'd like to ask to Sir Gabe. Okay. So my first question is, there have been claims that about bacteria found on Mars. Is this true? I'd say that again. I didn't. I understood some of it. I didn't understand all of it. There have been some claims of bacteria on Mars. So, Are they as true? far as we know, to this point, they haven't found anything on Mars that indicates life is there. Uh, I, I don't know of anything that's been said that has proven any type of bacteria is there. There's water there, so within the water there may be bacteria, but I haven't seen anything that says, yes, we found something, but they're constantly looking. My second question is about the iron engines that are used in the satellites or probes. Uh, how powerful are they? Because I don't feel they are really powerful as compared to uh, fuel-powered engines like cryogenic engines. Yeah, well, you know, the size of the engine, the pound, everything is relative to the weight. The more something weighs, the bigger the engine has to be to get it up into space. That's the first critical thing. How heavy is it in order to get it going fast enough to break through the atmosphere? Once it's above the atmosphere and out of Earth's gravitational pull, it doesn't need much. It just needs a little thruster to push it. And once it keeps going, once it's going in space, nothing stops it. So the engines, once they're above the Earth's 
gravitational pull. They're much, much smaller and needed less, a lot less than the ones to get it off the planet. So my third question is, my final question, about the fuel that's used in to, for propelling rockets. I still don't understand. We are all in uh, fighting a war about pollution. So why not we use electric batteries that uh, can convert into a that can be converted all this energy into a lot of energy used for pro uh, propelling rockets and all uh, space related vehicles. So why don't we use electricity or nuclear oh. power source power sources for everything? Yeah. So so the biggest problem with that on Earth is the weight. You would need so much electricity to launch. These things make hundreds and hundreds of thousand kilos. To lift something up, you would need this huge, huge electrical source. Which to this point, maybe in the future, they will have technology who will do that. But I'll tell you something that they're doing right now. It's a lot like what you're talking about. Some of these missions, when they get up into space, they have solar panels. The solar panels absorb energy from the sun. They convert it to electricity. And that's what's used to power these probes as they go through space. So they're using electricity in space, but they don't have a way to convert it to make it powerful enough, enough to lift things off so fast enough. In the future, they may be able to do that. And yeah, we know pollution is an issue and it's always trying to be thought of, how can we make it better? But you know, it's oxygen and hydrogen, which are two gases in our atmosphere. So it does give off some pollution, but not like what you might think. So on the Perseverance rover, or I think Curiosity, there is a solar panels, there are solar panels and also a nuclear power source. When there are already sure. so solar panels present, why do we need a nuclear power source? Okay, so on Curiosity, there are no solar panels. Curiosity is nuclear powered. The, the rovers in the past, Spirit and Opportunity, were solar powered. Now the problem with solar power on Mars, Mars has huge sandstorms that engulf the whole planet and they cover up the solar panels. And that's what happens to these rovers. After a while, they're not able to charge the batteries because they can't get the energy from the sun. So with nuclear power, you don't need that. You don't have that problem. That's why they converted from solar to nuclear. But in the past, they did have solar energy that brought them around Mars, but they had this problem with huge sandstorms blocking the solar panels. And if something as heavy as a thousand kilos needs a lot of power. So you might need this huge, huge solar panel. So they went to nuclear because of the increase in weight and the problem with the sand from the sandstorms. Thank you, Daria. Thank you uh, for so many questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Gabe. So it was an honor having a conversation with you. I think you Thank you so much. I really appreciate your questions. Next, I would like to invite uh, Jia Jadab. Sir, uh, please give the chance to students first. Jia, Jia Jadab. Yes, sir. I am Jia Jadab from Mumbai, Maharashtra. I have a simple question. My age is 12. And uh, I want to become an astronaut in the future. So can you tell in short guidance what we really need to do for becoming that? Or what are the sources or what type of educational um, sources we need to do that? Yeah, so that's a very good question. And many people ask me now. now to become an astronaut, you really need a good math, math back, science background. So any type of engineer will help you get into that position. Aeronautical or aerospace engineering are two excellent fields, but almost any type of engineering field will get you to become an astronaut. Now, what I suggest you try to do, you try to get through ISRO, the Indian Space Agency, try to become an astronaut in, in India. Because if you want to go to America, and a lot of kids want to go to America, I don't discourage you, but you have to be an American citizen in order to be an astronaut in America. That's okay. It's not a huge problem. One of the ways you can do that, in order to become a citizen, you've got to get to America. So how can you get to America? One of the best ways is through education. 
Uh, America has amazing international programs for students who want to come to America. So you can go to university in America, you could go to graduate school in America, or you could go for a doctorate in America, but you've got to get there. Once you're there, you try to stay and establish residency. Once you establish residency, then you apply to go to NASA. I mean, it's, it's possible, but if I say to you, uh, your name is Jaira? Did I say that Gia. right, Jaira? Yes, Jaira. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, <laughs> so if I say to you, look, if you say today, I want to go to America and I want to be an astronaut, I will say to you, it's possible, but it's probably going to take you about 20 years. And you have to understand, it's a lengthy process, but it's okay. You're going to pass through those 20 years the way. So you can pass through them, building towards your goal with an astronaut, or you can do something else. But don't worry about the length of time. It's more important. Enjoy the adventure that it grants. People want to achieve their goals, but achieving their goal isn't important. It's enjoying the adventure that takes you there. Most of the time when you get there, you're not going to stay there. You want to do something else. Or it's not what you thought you're going to do something else. If you had a miserable time getting there, you don't want to do anything else. So try to just take little steps. Remember, one step at a time. Enjoy that step. And it might take you a while to get there, but it's okay. It is possible. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it was an honor to, uh, I can uh, see you virtually or meet you or talk with you. Thank you. It's my pleasure, my honor. I always say to the students, it's equal. It's equal to me and you. I appreciate you the same as you do me. I really mean that. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, here, here, uh, here, sir, with your uh, permission, I would also uh, add one thing for as advice for Jia. Uh, Jia, you just uh, uh, take interest with our programs. We are going to launch the fourth year, 4.2 India International Saravai Student Scientist Award with a first round that is a e quiz round through one Google form. So participate there. And if you are got uh, selected uh, by it, if you scored 80%, you will be selected. Or you, if, you, if you score 40%, you will go get a uh, certificate of participation here and try to get select. If you are get selected, then onwards National Science Day, 28 February 2023, we will conduct so many seminars uh, with uh, under the guidance of uh, our uh, this uh, Gabe and other uh, NASA and ISRO scientists. So you get an, an, an outline how you can improve to uh, success your aim in life that is to be an astronaut. So with this word, I would like to uh, invite uh, Neha Jain. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. So actually, uh, I am Arush Mishra. Yeah. I am I, I'm studying in Rajaji from campus one of CMS in Lucknow, Cambridge section, grade six. And I have I'm having four questions for games. So we have the uh, uh, Mishra ji, we have some uh, time uh, also. So uh, please ask uh, one or two questions, please. <laughs> okay, sir. We, so, so my first question for you was. So, like, it is having a proof that water is present on Earth. So, so to create a complex life, mostly organisms need water and a little bit of sunlight. But, so as we have discovered, tardigrades, some species of very small microorganisms, which can survive even without water. So, why we can't take the sample of them? Because it is already proved that they can survive in vacuum. We can take the sample and uh, place uh, them in the ice sheets or the water, which will allow them to breed further and can create more complex life. So, you're asking me a very interesting question. So, I'm an engineer. You know, I deal with roads and bridges. I'm not really a scientist. But I understand your question. So, I, I'm thinking you're asking me, if we have this on Earth, why can't we bring it to another place and have it there? Yes, yeah. sir. So, so the idea isn't to create life somewhere else. It's to find life somewhere else. So what they're trying to do, they're trying to find life on Mars. They're trying to find life on many different planets. But they're going there. And one of the things they do when they take these ships there, they put them in what's called the clean room. They analyze everything about this cargo. Make sure we don't bring something to the planet 
and then find it and think it was there. They want to make sure whatever we find was created on that planet. So they don't want to take something there and see if it will live. They want to see if life exists on that planet. Yes, sir. sir. And my second question is, sir, because Mars is having a very thin atmosphere compared to Earth, and as we know, to reach any celestial object, we see it shining. But the thing which would be coming here is because of the Earth atmosphere, the light is bended, and we don't know the up proper direction of something. But because Mars is having a very thin atmosphere, so the light is not bended that much. So why can't we make a permanent base over there, which can help us also to get to other planets more easily? Well, that's a very interesting question. Now, there's a movie called The Martian. If you have not seen this movie or you know of this movie, try to see this movie. It really depicts what life on Mars will be like. So yes, Mars's atmosphere is very thin, but one of the problems that causes radiation is very bad on Mars. Radiation comes from the sun. Our planet has a, um, an atmosphere that protects us. On Mars, it has the thin atmosphere. So if you're on Mars, you have to contend with severe radiation. So in this movie, The Martian, the astronauts are living in a big domed area, a big glass area where they can take off their spacesuits and they can breathe and they can survive. You have to have a domed area where oxygen is, put, is given so astronauts can breathe. So that's one of the reasons that they have that. But if you see this Martian, they grow food on, on Mars. They have a little car that they drive around on Mars, and they're living in a domed area. And this will be the future, but it's going to take a long, long time to do that. But a very good question. I hope I answered it correctly. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir, you, for answering my question. It's an honor to uh, that you tell us. I asked you a new question, and you told me the answers, or even online. It was a great honor for me. And for me as well. I want you to understand that. Thank you. Next, uh, I would like to invite Divanshi Mehta. Unmute yourself. Divanshi Mehta. Hello, sir. I'm Divanshi Hi. Mehta. And I'm from Navi, Mumbai. Uh, so uh, I study in Balbharti Public School. Okay. And I'm in eighth grade. So I just wanted to ask you a simple question that I see a lot of YouTube, uh, uh, according to uh, relating to space and other uh, programs, but I get a lot of fake news from there. So, can you just provide us uh, with some uh, 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 some books or something like uh, newsletters or uh, something like articles, so that we can get the actual information what uh, the programs is really about? Yes, and I, that's a really good question because. You see a lot of things on social media and you see a lot of things on YouTube that depict what something is. You don't know how valid that is and you don't even know the source of a lot of it. Yes, but what sir. I suggest to you, you can go to the NASA site, nasa.gov. On that site, there are many great educational links. You can go to those links. And even as teachers, if there are any teachers listening, they have lesson plans for students based on age and ability on that website. So I would encourage you, you can go to JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, jpl.nasa.gov or nasa.gov. Go to those sites. They have many, many links on those sites. Give you the information you're looking for. Give you sources on how you can do what you want to do. And you'll know they will be correct. Thank you, sir. Thank you're you so welcome. much. My pleasure. Thank you. So sir. It's a uh, really big blessing for you, uh, for us. Next. Uh, yeah, I would like to. Too. Next, I would like to invite uh, Advik. Advik, are you uh, here? Uh. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, Gabe, sir, first of all, it's a really good pleasure to, you know, talk to you. And thanks for this very real, uh, informative image, uh, informative information you gave to us today about NASA. It's a really good thing that you're doing it. And I really appreciate it, first of all. And uh, I'm currently in 11th grade studying engineering. I'm an IIT aspirant. So I really wanted to ask this that how to stay, you know, consistent in studies. I every time, you know, whenever I give tests and I really get good marks sometimes, I get overconfident and try to stay consistent, but it doesn't go the same way, you know. So how to stay, you know, focused, consistent in studies and 
keep scoring good marks and keep looking for you know opportunities for a goal and etc yeah you know it's, it's it's really a good question and and what sometimes the hardest thing to do is figure out what you want to do you know uh, my sister when she was three years old she knew at three years old what she wanted to do it's so easy to do something when you don't know what it is most of us don't know what we really want to do so we try to struggle what do we really want to do and how do i team maintain what i want to do so it sounds to me like you're doing all the right things you're just having a little bit of a challenge trying to figure out hey, is this what i really want so what i suggest to everybody if you're not sure what you want to do ask yourself what would be the most fun thing to do every day when i get up every day and i go do this what is the most fun thing and say to yourself okay this is my goal this is what i want to do what steps do i take to achieve it and you always want to take small steps you know you just want to focus on one day at a time when you get up in the morning you say okay i want to enjoy this day i'm going to do my best at everything i do it doesn't matter i'm just going to enjoy this day that's a short term goal and then you take those short term goals and you build them into a long term goal but try to stay goal oriented and you can adjust every day it doesn't matter today this is what i want to do tomorrow this is what i want to do but stay focused on one day at a time challenge yourself how well can i do this and if you learn to do that you'll feel good about your effort and you'll give you more confidence and belief okay i'll go to the next day yes but i understand sometimes it's hard to stay focused and it's hard to keep motivated but if you do short term goals you know it's just one day if i say to you do you think you can do this for one day just one day you'll probably say yes and then you do that every day and you want to make sure you enjoy that day as you pass through that is the most critical part of learning i hope that helps you thank you and exploring other planets and maybe even living on other planets but right now they're doing a lot you know what holds us back is technology we only have so much technology as technology advances and like with the James Webb telescope we're seeing things we never saw before and now that we see them and learn about them it helps us to develop process that may take us further but yeah methane gas is a very positive to most scientists in looking for the future thank you sir uh next uh, i next i would like to invite jaskeet singh mute yourself jaskeet hello sir jaskeet 
जसकिरीत जसकिरात या गुड या गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन i would i would have the pleasure to speak and interact with all the my friends i would ask you the simple question that how the meteorites come to, to the earth and how they get heated up my simple question is is that yeah well meteorites are meteorites traveling, traveling all around, around all around the solar system and all around the universe these meteorites are coming all around and all around and when they come to earth earth has an atmosphere so they when they hit the atmosphere it creates friction So friction creates heat. So when they hit the atmosphere and they're going across the top of the atmosphere, they're creating a lot of heat. And the heat is what makes them glow and what makes them turn red. And that's what causes the heat. And when they're traveling through space, there's no heat. But when they hit an atmosphere, the friction of slowing down and going through the atmosphere generates a lot of heat. That's why they that's why they're hot when they come through the atmosphere. But how, how is the, how is the effect of meteorites on the earth? Uh, say that again please how is the effect of meteorites on the earth how how what is the impact of the meteorites well most of them burn up in the atmosphere so it's really not an impact the ones that pass through the atmosphere can cause some serious damage and and when they come through at such tremendous speed you know we had one i think it was a few years ago that came through in russia and i don't know if you saw it they saw going through the sky this red red ball and you know it caused all kinds of problems in russia even being hundreds and hundreds of kilometers away so they create they create all of this heat and you know that's what they believe at one time a big huge meteorite came through the atmosphere and caused the earth all of the dinosaurs and everything in the past to be killed because of the impact on earth and what it is around the planet thank yeah, you thanks. we are taking the next thanks. question uh, uh, please uh, come harjas singh dhilon Arjas Hello Ask your question Hello Hello sir my question is that uh, uh, what is the possibility of metaverse and uh, is it dangerous for us What's the um, said again what's the possibility of metaverse if i am not beyond to the topic metaverse materials i'm not sure what word you're saying sir i think sir, he is a, he, 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 he is very much admired to uh, stan lee uh, who designed uh, avengers and all the things and uh, here is a word uh, he said that is metaverse is there uh, beyond in <laughs> universe there is a metaverse so he want to know whether yeah. it is possibility is there or not I think anything is possible. I really believe anything is possible. I really don't know much about this subject, so I, I really can't answer intelligently. But but I really believe anything is possible. Uh, it's just do we have the technology to verify it? You know, do we have the technology? If it is there, can we verify it? I don't know if you know. They talk about Planet X in our solar system. So Planet X is a new planet. They think they discovered, but it's so far away they can't even verify it exists. So many of these things for me you know they were there in theory but not in reality and I don't know until technology advances considerably how we can actually validate so that something we think is there is actually there uh, next I okay, would sorry. like to invite uh, Partha Thakur we have a lot of people uh, in raise and queue so we are taking some of them Partha Thakur ask your question um am I audible Yes, yes, yes. Hi. Uh, all right. So, hi, Gabe. Uh, my name is Parth. I study in Bangalore Public School, Khadar. Uh, it's a school in Navi, Mumbai. Uh, I had a question that has been nagging at me for quite a while because I've been following the work of NASA. Right. I couldn't really figure out um, how do you guys decide? You know, what sort of question? How do you guys just go? Hey, I'm going to go redirect an asteroid, or you know, I'm going to explore Titan for that matter. How do you guys decide what will be your priority? What questions to probe on? So, so what they have, and again, I'm not really knowledgeable in this area, but I know a little bit about it. There will be a scientist or somebody of notoriety who will come to NASA and say, "I think this would be a good program. I think it would be a good project. Let's send a probe to Pluto. Let's do this or let's do that." So once the idea is there, they form a panel with a bunch of people in NASA and scientists and technologists and try to figure out, "Is this a good project? How much will it?"
cost? How long will it take? How can we do this? What are the benefits of this? And then they all get together and they're looking at hundreds and hundreds of different ideas. And they try to figure out which one would be the best to select. This process might take years. When you see a project actually live, it might be 15 or 20 years before it was thought about. So it takes a long, long time once the thought is there to turn it into a mission. It goes through many, many screenings along the way, competing with other projects, figure out which one might be the most beneficial. And that's how they select it. But it's a very long process. Thank you, sir. Next, next, next. Uh, sorry, we have to take only one question. In next phase of any webinar, we'll take all of them. Uh, now, uh, I would like to invite Gita Durai. <coughs> Ask Gita, ask your question. Hello, sir. Good, uh, good evening, sir. Good it's evening really very, very informative and also a very nice program. Sir, so really, I am one of my, one, one of the teacher from Chennai. So I didn't give that um, there's a link to my children. They are missed. So next time onwards, I'll give that uh, I'll inform to the children to join. It's so very, very, very informative. So my ambition, I have to bring some children for scientists. So I have produced so many children, doctors, engineers, and other professions. But it's very, 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 very nice program, sir. Really, I was blessed. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, you are so welcome. It is my pleasure and my honor. And listen, for the teachers who might be listening, I have a group email I sent to schools around the world. If you get me your email, and you can go through the host of this program to get my email, send me your email address. I will add you to the group email I sent to schools around the world. A couple of times a month, I send updates on the space program. I send cool links. I send pictures. This will help you can share with your students, and hopefully they will have a little bit more fun learning when it comes directly from the Space Center. Great, Definitely, sir. So you, definitely, sir. I will do, sir. Okay, thank you thank very you. much, sir. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. Gabe, sir, is uh, always uh, with uh, students. Uh, we already seen in a uh, presentation there is a Gabe's NASA NASA Information Center. So we are also can do uh, uh, with all students and teachers some uh, specific centers, and we can. Uh, uh, disseminate the space science or engineering science with all of them. So uh, now yeah. I would like to invite uh, Akanksha. Uh, hello, sir. Hello, Gabe, sir. Uh, myself, uh, I'm friends are over, but you and myself, uh, Akanksha, from uh, pursuing my BTEC in artificial intelligence and data science. Uh, sir, I have a simple question. What is this actually the dark matter and the dark energy is? And I think a right question to the right, uh, right person like you actually is a food for my mind. So I expect an answer for this. <laughs> well, this is a really, you know, this is a challenging question. Uh, I'm not a scientist, and there are scientists all around the world trying to answer this question. So. I really don't know. I, I would tell you honestly, I, I don't know too much about this. I'm a civil structural type of engineer. So I deal with roads and bridges and buildings and infrastructure. So when you start getting into some really highly technical scientific questions, I, I really don't know. I, I hear of it and I know about it, but I'm not knowledgeable enough to try to give you a good answer. And, and you know, I always say <laughs> when everything else fails, you can Google it. You know, Google give you some response that hopefully will be beneficial. But rather than try to pretend I know an answer, I always say honestly, if I don't think I can help, I don't try to tell you something that, that might not be true. But you can always Google it. I'm sure you can research it and find out something that will help you answer this question way better than I can. And I don't mean not to answer. I'm just not sure of the correct answer. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I couldn't do more. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are taking the last one, sir, if you permit. Uh, from Suman Bala. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, it's my pleasure to talk to you. Sir, uh, my question is that uh, 
as we see on social media or on youtube that there are aliens present on the mars sir is it true well so far they have not found anything on mars to indicate life exists Okay, sir. Sir, does the aliens exist in the universe, sir? Oh, I believe aliens have to exist. We have we have billions and billions of planets in our universe. I think yes. Earth cannot be the only one that has life. In my opinion, it is impossible to think there are not aliens somewhere. I do not believe they've been to Earth. Many people do, but I don't believe. And the reason I don't believe it, I think if they would come to Earth, we would know. You know, these aliens are probably billions and billions and billions of kilometers away. If they can from there to here, they're not going to turn around and go back. You know, they're yeah. going to make contact. We're going to know they were here. And so we've never, you know, we have UFOs. We have all kinds of things that people think might be an alien. But I honestly believe if they were here, we would know. They would make contact. If they have the technology to get here from billions and billions of kilometers away, surely they have the technology to link with us and figure out how to communicate that's my view a lot of people say i know you hear about area 51 in in america area 51 people say there's an alien in there but yes. i don't believe i don't believe it because i think if there was an alien we would know you cannot keep this secret for 60 years you just cannot do that especially today with technology area 51 was a, a tested development area for aircraft for the air force they were trying to develop aircraft that radar could not detect. So they were designing and planning it. It was in Area 51. It was kept secret from the world. But these aircraft are now operational. They declassified the secrecy of it. But still, people still believe there's an alien there. And I never say to anybody, you're wrong. Some people say, I'm walking along the street. A ship picked me up, took me up in space, examined me, and brought me back down. People say that. And I don't say you're wrong, but I don't believe it. I, I think we would know. But that's my opinion. But yeah, I believe life has to exist outside of Earth. What about the UFOs, sir? Uh, UFOs are that. You don't know what they are. You know, they, they might be, they might not, but we have not detected. If they are, again, I think we would know. Because okay. I think whatever...
Owner to us, all of us. The chance to talk with students. You know, this has been a bit challenging because I am traveling around the world and we were trying to find a, a time when I wouldn't be flying somewhere, or I wouldn't be doing something else. So we, we had to do a lot of calculations but, and coordination but we were able to do it, and I thank everybody who participated. Yes, sir, sure, sir. Once again, it's a, it, a, due to your kind presence, it became a great uh, uh, session, and thank you once again, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all of us. You're, we'll, you're very welcome. By these uh, words, uh, once again, by thanking students and Gabe, uh, we are concluding this session here. Thank you. Thank you. You can leave and okay. stay big. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, sir. So uh, it was the great session from Gabe of NASA who served NASA being an engineer at Kennedy Space Station, Space Center, and it was a great thing. And uh, all our, uh, of you uh, make a good talk with him. And with this, we are once again inviting you all to get 
your chance if you are a student get your chance and join our event 4.0 that is fourth india international saravai student scientist award 2023 which will be starting from uh, 1st january 2023 through our google form e astro e astro quiz e astro quiz which is available at our site uh, sites.google.com oblique view oblique saravai ssa even uh, we are uh, there is a um, one scroll below this uh, screen and please uh, take this email and we are giving uh, some description in youtube link also you take the link and uh, take your chance it will this um, google form will open in every sunday from 1st january 2023 to uh, 28 uh, 28 february 28 february 2023 national science day so get uh, join the with this event uh, and make it a successful for yourself for ourselves thank you once again it's a great um, journey with you all of you thank you One another information, we are also going to conduct another November uh, NASA event webinar on 14th November uh, at same platform. So be there and uh, take your chance uh, to talk with NASA scientist jo George A. Seleger. He will be there to talk to you. We are sharing the last moment and uh, information uh, about this uh, event. So join our events and webinars. It will be prestigious for you also. what who can participate what will be there will be awarded what to do in first round you have to join if uh, any Sunday if a uh, piece is applicable you have to pay this and take you the password for next Sunday attempt on Sunday get 40 percent to get certificate of participation and pay and get 80 percent to get direct selection and it is open up to 28 february no fee is applicable for cwsn bpln host participants other have to 
be due to the applicable fees. So thank you once again.